Hello, it's his Volk. Time to enjoy card making with me. In this video I will be playing with washi tapes and have a surprising design for you. I used this washi tape from Alina Craft and made a swatch for it. They have nice soft gradient colors and I feel very sturdy and smooth and kind of soft. For the cards I will be making I combine the washi tape with these word birthday dies. Let's start with the paper. I have two different sheets of white DCP paper. I use 250 grams paper for the card base and 120 grams paper for the card panel. You can also use 250 grams paper for the card panel. The card will be more sturdy and a bit heavier. You can use any paper you have in any thickness or weight. The card base is an A4 paper cut in half. This card base I score in half and fold it in half to get a 10.5 cm by 14.8 cm card. If you use the edge of your scoring board you get a nice straight fold. The panel I trim half a cm smaller than the card base, so it leaves a wide border to the card later on. I cut it at 14.3 by 10 cm. Before you start working with it, check if the size is correct. You see, the panel is a few millimeters smaller on all sides now, which looks nice and even. My work mat has a metric scale and has lines on it in centimeters. The washi tape is exactly one centimeter wide. To make it easy enough to stick the washi tape on the card panel, you first draw small pencil lines at the side of the panel every one centimeter. You also do this on the other side. If you don't have a work mat with checkered lines, you can also use checkered paper. Or you can use your ruler of course. If the width of your washi tape is wider or smaller, just use the width of your washi tape. Notice that at the bottom the distance between the last line and the end of the paper is just a few millimeters. For this project I'm going to use only the 1 cm rolls. And I choose the colors that match good together. The colors are difficult to describe. They are all in the same color tone, sort of earth tones, from flesh and pink to brownish purple. Now I choose not to use all of them. The lighter colors I skip for now. They won't match that well with the white of the paper background. To prevent them from rolling off my desk and to keep them in kind of a gradient order, I stick them to my table. Let's start with the purple color. Now we stick the first washi tape under the first mark at the right and on the other side under the fifth mark at the left. It is most handy if you peel off the size of tape you need. So in that way you can stick a nice straight piece. I intentionally don't start sticking the washi tape at the top of the corner. It is most easy to start here. The washi tape I use and lots of washi tapes I ha have this have a print mark on it. That does not look so nice, so I tear that off and save this piece for later. Remember, don't waste the tiniest bit, it can always come in handy. Now we stick the next washi tape on the panel, following the guide marks, but leaving one open space between each washi tape. And so we continue with the rest of the washi tapes. Every time sticking the roll of tape back into its place on the table to not get confused with the following order. Exactly there on the edge is a new print mark on the tape. I managed to keep it over the edge. By hovering over the panel and keeping the washi tape straight, you can figure out exactly where you have to stick the tape. Because I used the marks I drew, we have exactly the right distance between the washi tapes. There are no marking lines at the top and bottom. I tape the strips at the top and bottom by feel, with equal spacing. These pieces are shorter and the guide marks on the sides give enough guidance to stick the tape straight on. We will be using all small pieces, so all pieces that are too long I cut off. The short strips that cross now fold over, that way the edges will look neater later. But it also helps to make the washi tape stick nice and firm, so it won't come off in a while. 
I glued a small scrap all to the edge of my desk. Really a technique that is a lot of fun to do. The panel I already have now would be fine to use as a background for a card. But I'm going to spice it up. There will be a second layer of washi tape strips on top. These go in the same diagonal direction, but seen from the other side. Starting in the upper left corner up to the fifth stripe, I also take the same color washi tape as seen in the upper right corner. So all the colors are used symmetrically to each other. I now stick the tape exactly in the empty opening you see on the sides. Keep the rolls of tape in order. Especially when the colors are close together, it is hard to keep the right order. Try to keep your scraps of washi tape colors together. I did not do this and it is harder later on to see which gradient it was. Also with the upper and lower strips I go from blank side to blank side. I stay parallel. You have to search a bit for where to stick, but once you get going you can see exactly when you are right. It is a good thing that you can take washi tape off and stick it back on again and again. I really did have to redo some of the strips because it occasionally went wrong. Again we cut the longer parts off and fold the overhanging washi parts to the back of the panel. At the corners I cut the washi tape off at an angle, leaving two small parts that you can fold over easily. With a bone folder you can stick the washi firmly to the paper. I have these lovely birthday sentiment dies from Alina Craft. And they appeal to me perfect for using on these cards. We need a matching colored paper for these dies and because we don't have that we just make it. I use the darkest color washi tape and stick a few strips close together on a scrap piece of paper to make my own matching colored paper. In between I measure the size I need for the die cut so I don't waste too much tape. Be sure to stick the tape perfectly next to each other so you don't see a white line in between. Again it is very easy with smooth paper and this washi tape to try over and over again. It is very forgiving. This piece we will die cut and use as a sentiment on a card. To make gluing easier I stick Alina Craft double sided tape on the back of the self made washi tape paper piece. I keep all small parts in a plastic bag, easy to grab when I need a small piece like for this one. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? And have you already clicked the like button and the bell button? Thank you so much! Try to peel off a corner of one side of the backing of the tape. Using a sharp tool like a needle make life lots easier. Don't peel off the whole backing yet. Just do a small corner like me. Slide the non-sticky part on first and tape it when it is in place. Using a bone folder you can then attach it more firmly, although it is not necessary because die cutting it will press it together as well. Try to get the paper out of the die while keeping all pieces together, that is most easiest. Because this washi tape is smooth it shouldn't be that hard. To make the text on the die cut stand out, we also need a white die cut. Therefore, die cut a white paper with double sided tape on the back with the same birthday die. Again try to keep all pieces together. You see how I managed to do it carefully. I now need several pieces from the white birthday die cut. Pieces I don't use right now I stick back to the protective backing of the tape. The brownish die cut pieces I use as an inlay to fill up the gaps. Using a needle or a small sharp tool is easiest. So you don't lose the stickiness of the tape and you have a good side on where you stick those tiny pieces. Then I fill up the holes in the letters again with the white die cuts. Making the whole sentiment brown white is possible, but I always do things the hardest way and I choose to take a second color for the sentiment. 
Therefore, I taped a small strip of washi tape to a piece of paper. Again, I put a small strip of double-sided tape on the back and tied that, that small washi tape part, with only the tiny letters happy in them. These tiny letters I glue in the openings on the card. The finished card panel I glue to the folded card base with double-sided tape from Alina Craft. Here I use the 5mm tape. While taping the back of this panel, I suddenly get a great idea to use the leftovers of washi tape I still have at the side of my desk. Getting ideas for new card designs is mostly a matter of just doing things. See what you like, see what you have left and combine things you have. But mostly, enjoy the card making part. You have seen me stick panels to card bases more than once, so I hope you remember it and benefit from doing it this way as well. To make a matching envelope, we need an extra strip of so-called card panel paper. Herefore, I take a strip of thin paper, which I mark off by feel. Just mark a size that you like. And mark the bottom of the envelope. Coincidentally, this piece happens to be exactly 4 cm wide. The length is always the height of the envelope. Again, mark the sides with a pencil 1 cm apart. And stick the washi tapes 1 cm apart from each other. That is, if your washi tape is 1 cm wide. If you start at the top left side of the paper, you then go diagonally to the first mark line you made leaving 1 cm of white space at the right side. Continue until the whole strip is covered. Restart doing this for the other side. At the top right side, stick the washi tape on the white opening that is left. And cross to the other side where you fill in the white opening on the left. Keep going until all gaps are filled. That simple! I had some trouble though keeping all colors apart since I made a mess on the side of my desk. The part you cannot see luckily. Playing with these washi tapes give a kind of satisfying feeling. They are so smooth and it is just nice to use them and stick them to the paper. Folding them to the other side of the paper is also relaxing to do. You can laugh about it but just, I just like doing it. Take attention at what I am doing now. On the corner where the washi is sticking out, I cut the washi at an angle. Now I can fold the tape to the back of the paper, not having to hustle with ugly folding seams or double tape on the back. Dimpled spots you can easily flatten with a bone folder. Stick it to the envelope and another matching envelope is finished. Here another look at the card I just made. The shininess of the washi tape is very special and I also like the gradient in color a lot. Also this card is very special because of the smooth feeling, something I haven't experienced in card making before. With all these tiny scraps of washi that I didn't want to throw away, I was more or less in a hurry to stick them to another card panel. If you want to do it neatly, you could of course also put measure lines at the side of the panel and follow these guidelines. I chose not to and guess the distance between the washi tapes. It is not so bad if you stick one crooked or wrong. You can easily adjust or leave it as is. It is fun that this one is not perfect. I use torn washi edges, but if you like a more neat style, Cut them with scissors. Also you can alternate between longer and shorter strips or alternate between colors. Nothing is wrong, just do as you like. On this panel I use the leftover sentiment text, which is the negative of the parts I used for the first card. Notice that I have used some white letters for the word happy this time. And I glued the decorative white swirls around the card. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. What do you think? I also could have used glitters or gems. But I wanted purely to stick with the washi tape for my cards today. 
because the white background card appealed a bit too wide to me, I decided to add some more small pieces of washi tape to the edges of the card base, opposite to the pieces of the card panel. So where a washi strip leans to the left on the panel, I have it lean right on the card base, if you understand what I mean. It isn't perfect, not perfect at all, but it was just a quick way to use up my scraps from the first card. And again, it was fun to do. Here I need to cut the washi, because it is the card base. I cannot fold it to the other side, but because this washi tape is quite reliable, I trust it will stick. To have the panel stand out above the background and give more dimension to the card and all these stripes, I glue the panel to the card using 3D foam tape. This tape is from my local store, it is 2mm thick I guess. It suits the job very well. And the way I cut the tape into smaller strips is easier to do with leftover protective backing from the double sided tape sheets. Having it stick onto a tape sheet makes the cutting and measurement much easier. If you made something you find too busy gluing on top of each other, or on the other hand you find it too boring and are not sure of what to do, adding this way of dimension might be a good option. For the decoration on the envelope I made guide strokes every centimeter to spread the masking tape more evenly. Since I had now such tiny pieces left, it was easier to work this way. Again I folded the ends over to the back, and glued this small strip on the front of the envelope using double sided tape. Here is another look at the finished card. You can see clearly the dimension and the different colors of text in the sentiment. Here is the first card I made, and I made another one like this off screen. I needed much more washi tape for these designs as the one with the scraps. They also look nicer in my opinion, really a good men's card as well. You can see a little difference between the two cards that look the same but quite aren't. If you look closely you see that on the right card I stick the washi tape one measure point lower than the card on the left. This way the stripes on the right have one more sloping angle. Also the gaps between the washi are smaller. Let me take them apart and I show it to you. It is a bit hard to explain and to see what happens. This line and this line are best to compare. If you follow this purple line from top left to right bottom, let's see that's here and we count the places where we drew the guide marks, I glued the top of the washi close to the sixth guideline. Where here, on the other card, this second strip is the same comparison washi tape strip. Let me see. Here I glued the top part of the washi strip three marks down. That means next to the third guideline of the panel. So the first washi line you stick determines the way your panel is going to look, and how big the openings will be. Now I made it more complex than it is, and that is because I turned the card panel upside down. If you start watching the video from the start you might notice that, but I like the color gradient better this way. The texts are different because I use different colors. Actually, I like the white with dark best. The envelopes are also a little different. You see, when you make the strip a bit smaller, also the angle of the tape changes and with that the white gaps in the strip. Here I used the dark washi tape with a light one on top, which is the same pattern as on the other envelope. Only the order of where I started is different. If you look closely at the dark color, you see that I made V shapes with all the colors of washi tape, which is the same as on the cards. Tell me what you think of this way to use your washi tapes. The washi tape, dyes and other common products from Alina Craft Store are listed below in the descriptions. I encourage you to check them out 
and find all nice products from Alina Craft on AliExpress or Amazon. For more crafty card making videos, check my channel Sisvolk. And check my other socials like Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. For loads of cards and card making tips I made that might inspire you for your own card making. I wish you a nice day and hope to see you next time. Bye bye!